In this video, we'll be taking a metahuman character, equipping them with a Paragon body, and then creating a control rig from them based on the mannequin control rig so that we can animate and key them in sequencer. So the first thing we want to do is duplicate the blueprint for our metahuman because we're going to use this as the base for our character. Once we've created the duplicate blueprint, we jump inside and we're going to go through and delete everything we don't need except for the body. The reason we don't want to delete the body is we're going to be replacing it with our other mesh. But once we replace it, you'll see two major issues. The first, he's now got a second head we don't want. And the second, the head is not in the correct place. To fix the first, we jump into the skeletal mesh. And we're going to have to find everything that relates to this head and get rid of it. So up here you can see head skin. If we isolate that, that looks like a good place to start. So the best way to get rid of this is actually to create a new material. Now I just call this invis. It's easy to find later. But we are going to set it to a mask blend mode. And for the opacity mask, we put zero. We can also set it to Unlit, which should make it take up even less resources while it's in the background. And now we have our invisible material. Okay, go back into the skeletal mesh, replace this head with our invis material, and some of this stuff will start to disappear. Okay, once that's gone, you'll get a horrific image. That's all the rest of the materials we have to get rid of. So we'll go through now, isolate each section, and figure out where these materials are located and replace them all with our invis. A handy trick for doing a lot of these is we make sure we have it selected here and when we find one we know that we need to replace, like this one, we use this button. You selected asset from content browser and it's just going to use the one we have selected which is the invis material. Makes it a little bit faster. Now we have our beautiful headless character. Okay, now that we have the headless Paragon character, we need to fix this issue where the head is not sitting on the neck. Uh, select your metahuman head. You can double click on the skeletal mesh. And we want to go to the animation blueprint. This is just a fast way to get there. When you open this up, it might go to the event graph. You just need to open the anim graph. Either click there or down here. Um, it'll present you with this. What we're actually looking at is what's under cache pose here. Um, and what this is doing is it's copying the pose from the mesh that it's parented. So if we jump back here, you can see that the face is parented to the body. So it's copying the pose from that. And we just want to tick use mesh pose here. If we come back, you'll see that it's sitting in a really good position. However, he now has this fleshy weird color thing. To fix this, we want to create a mask that masks out the bottom of the neck where all this weirdness is happening. To do that, we jump into the material here. We go into the parent. And then if we scroll down to the bottom again, we'll find another parent. Go into that. Okay, and we want to set this to masked create a linear gradient in the V channel, but we want it to come from the bottom and not from the top. So we're going to use a one minus and set that opacity mask. What that's essentially going to do is create a gradient from the uh, top to the bottom, I believe. Okay, after that's compiled, you'll notice it is cutting off the bottom, but if we come back to our blueprint, it's cutting off too much. We need some of that neck back. So, the best thing to do is to go back into the material instance connected to our thing and back into the parent again. We want to go to the material property overrides down here. Tick opacity mask clip value and change this to a smaller value like 0.2. Come back. It'll compile. As you can see, we've got a much nicer looking neck. What this essentially has done is we created a 0 to 1 gradient and then we set it to mask the object. Because of the way mask works, 
it is either on or off, visible or invisible, unlike transparency, which has a gradient. This is the default value. Anything below this value, so between 0 and 0.333, gets masked and becomes invisible. What we've done is we've raised this value to here. So now anything below 0.2 becomes invisible. It's just a quick way to create the mask at the correct point that we want without having to mess around with the material too much. We have our metahuman face. He's got all his hair, everything he needs, and he's part of the body. If we were to play around and assign an animation asset, like an attack, you would see that the head follows along correctly. Now I'm going to be showing you how to create a control rig for our character by transferring an existing one from the mannequin. These steps are going to seem pretty unintuitive, but I'll explain it all at the end after we do it. Firstly, you want to duplicate your control rig on your mannequin, call it our custom character. Open that on up, then come on over to the right panel, change the preview mesh to our Paragon character, just the normal one. Once you change that, you'll notice the rig over here no longer works. It's all the controls are in the wrong position. So we're going to be fixing that. To do that, we are taking our forward solver, plugging it into the backward solver, compiling, and you'll see that all the controls have been set to the right positions. However, if you look over in the details panel, you'll see that the current transform has these values in it. We want this to be 0, 0, 0 because this is the default location and we want everything to animate from here. So to do that, we search for control over here, select all these controls, and we say set initial transform from current. And now all of these controls have roughly 0, 0, 0 in here. These are rounding errors. OK, so now all the controls are in the right position, but we've broken our rig because we took away the forward solver and plugged in the backwards. So we reverse what we've done, take our forward solver back up here, plug it in, hit compile, save, and now our rig works fine. So why does this work? The forward solver is designed to set the position and rotation and scale of the bones based on the controls. So when we move this control, it's set in the location of the bones. However, our backward solver is designed to set the control transform from the bone transform. So that's essentially what we've done. We've cheated, taken the forward solver, plugged it in for just one moment so that we can set the initial position of what we want all these controls to be. We've set that as the default, and then we've plugged it back in like normal, and all these controls have been set based on the bones. So we have a working rig. This will only work with a hierarchy that follows the epic naming conventions. If you have a skeleton that's different, you'll have to go in here and start getting messy and changing everything around. And there you have it. We have our metahuman head with all of its great utility attached to a custom character body, all animatable through a control rig that we got from the mannequin. This can be added like normal through sequencer and used to modify animations or bake animations to the control rig. I'm planning on making a few more videos in the future, focusing on topics such as animation workflows with control rig, uh, real-time audio, control rig itself, and just some general sequencer tips and tricks that make life a lot easier. If you've got any suggestions or requests, then please post them below in the comments. Otherwise, I hope this has helped you get your characters animation ready for Unreal Engine.